Hello, everyone. My name is Philip Adu. So are you thinking about analyzing your qualitative data and you are looking into a free software to use? I have a good news for you. So there's a software called QDA Manalite. As you can see here, when you open the software, this is what you're going to see. So you can see here that I've already uploaded my transcripts and analyze the data. So I'm just going to try to give you like overview of what the functions and how to use it. And then my next video, I'll be breaking down the process, you know, how to upload your transcript, how to code and also retrieve information from the system. Let's go. If you go to project and you click on the project, so you can see new. So this means that if you want to create a new project, you can click on that. If you want to open an existing project, you'll be able to do that. If you want to reopen the project that you are working on, you could do that too. And if you want to save the project or give a new name to the project, you can click on save as. If it's the first time of you saving the project, you can go to save us and save the project. And also, if you want to export all the document that you have uploaded into the system, you can click on documents. Because this one is a free version, there are some functions that you may not be able to get access to. So I'm going to focus on the functions that are available under the free version. If you want to write a memo, you can click on notes and then write a memo, your reflections that you want to keep. So that's all about project. Okay, so let's talk about cases. Think about cases as participants. So you can see here that I have five participants, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. And also you can think about it as transcript. So each participant has a document or a transcript. So when you upload all the transcript and it will appear here as cases. If you did a focus group, you can also upload a focus group document here and it will be labeled as case. So that's all about a case. You can add a case, you can uh, append a case. If you want to replace a new P1 with a new document, you can click on this and go here and then you'll be able to replace that information. If you want to delete a case, you can do that. So that's what you need under cases in terms of variables, think about variables as characteristics or demographics of participant or the characteristics of the document that you have uploaded. So that's what you have to think about. So if you want to add a variable like gender, age, you can click on add and you'll be able to do that. And that information will come here. If you want to click on delete, if you want to delete a variable, you can click on delete and do that. If you want to transform a variable, Let's say a variable is nominal. Nominal is a categorical variable. And you want to change it to string variable. You can type in, you can change it to that. So you can record, you have a lot of options in terms of making an adjustment to the variable. If you want to know the variable properties, you can click on properties and then you can take you here and then you'll be able to know the variable properties. So let's say I click on age, I go here and I want to know the properties, right? So you can see that age here is an integer. So it's numbers, right? And this place, you can see a short description, a long description. So let's say if you want to give a definition of what the variable is all about, you can provide that information here. You can also, if you want to give long definition or long information about a variable, you can type it also here, right? So this is an option for you. And then if you finish, you just close it. You can also click on a spreadsheet editor. After you've entered all the variables, you can click on this and see whether everything is accurate. If it's not, you can make changes to it. So there's an option for you to make a necessary change if you want to, or if you want to enter all the information on this table, you can do that. After you have created all the variables involved, age, gender, experience, and ethnicity, in this case, you can go to variables and click on this one, and then you can enter their information, the attribute connected to participant. So that's all about the variables, right? So think about variables as demographic information connected to each of the participants. So next one is 
codes. So the codes are labels that you give to a significant information you identify in the transcript, right? So you can see here that we have codes here, right? These codes are connected to significant information. We selected the significant information and then we created a code representing the significant information, right? So the code is just a phrase that best represents the significant information at the same time addressing the research question that you have. So you can see there are all the codes under the first research question are all here. And then if you click on it, you see what the significant information in which was selected, right? So you can also search and replace a code, right? So if you want to search for a code, you click on search here. And then you look for the code that you are searching for, maybe having time with family. And if that's a code that you are searching for, you click on it and then you click on find. Uh, if you want to replace it with a different code, you can look for it and then you can replace it, right? So, you know, there's a flexibility here. As you are coding, you might change your mind and you can always go back and make changes or replace it with a different code. If you want to print out a code book, you can save it as a PDF. So you choose this one and then click on print and then you can save it on your computer. And when you save it, what you're going to see is the list of codes under each of the research question that you have. So the next one is document. So think about a document as all the information that you have uploaded into the system, right? I'm talking about all the documents, right? So let's say if you want to paste something, you can paste it here, click on paste, but I don't think it's needed. What is interesting is the fact that you can easily go to the document and make any changes that you want to make. If you are looking for something like if I'm looking for burnout, I can find in this document. So you can search for a specific word that you are looking for. And then you can also format it in terms of paragraph and make some changes to the document, right? The same thing as your Word document, when you are you open Microsoft Word document, anything that you can do there, you can do similar things here. That's all about the document. But another thing that you have to think about is, let's say you want to find out places where you coded. You can go to coded test and click on highlight and it will show places that you coded. So I see here that I coded this place. So if you want to know the place that you coded, you can just go to document and then highlight. You can also click on dim and to dim the places where you have coded. You can click on mask it can make the place darker so that you only see the place that you have not coded, right? And if you want to change it back to the normal state, you can just click on normal and then it comes back to the original state. This is also about a document. It's about how you want to view the document, right? If you want to number your lines, view line numbers, you can check that and then you can see all the numbers here. In case you want to know the number lines, you can bring them here. So what you see here, chat, it's about only the document that you have opened. So looking at the P3 document, this shows the theme or the codes that have been created. And this is the number of words. So you can see here that the number of words for this code is 27. The second code, which is spending time with family, is closer to 12 and then this one is above nine so this just give you a visual representation of the codes that you have created and also the number of words for only the document that you have opened you can change the figure you can change it to different the way that you want you can make word cloud right this word cloud is only for the code. So the bigger the code, the higher the number of words that are connected to that code, right? Another place that it may be useful for you is retrieve. So if you want to retrieve test, so this one is if you want to retrieve all the significant information you have, you have coded, you can go to test retriever, see all the significant information connected to 
specific participant, this is where you want to go, right? Next one that we may want to go is coding retriever. So you click on coding retriever. This is where you want to retrieve all the codes and their respective significant information. So another thing that you may want to explore is a list comment. You can see here that I don't have anything here because I didn't write about, you know, I didn't write my reflections, right? Start writing your memo. If you want to give that memo, you can click on this one and all the things that you wrote, all your reflection will be here. How do you write the memo? You can right click on the code that you want to connect the memo to, and then you can click on comment and then you write something about it. So when you write something here, when I write something here and then I close it and I go back to retrieve this place, you can see here that you see I have it here, right? And I have the case that this statement is connected to and also the code and the significant information too. You can, you know, write your reflections and connect it to the specific code. And you can get all the, that reflection here by going to retrieve and click on a list comment. Another information that you may retrieve or want to see is when you go to analyze and you go to coding frequency. Click on that. And then you select, in this case, you select all the codes that you want to look into. When you select, you have to click on OK. And I click on Search. You'll be able to see all the codes under their respective research question. The count, the count are the number of significant information connected to a specific code or a theme. The cases are the number of participants or documents that are connected to a specific code or team, right? So you can see all of them here. If you want to see it as a table form, you can click on table and then you can see all the information. The description, there was nothing here because when I was coding, I didn't put any kind of description like what the code stand for. So that's why this place is empty. When you are coding, you have an option to provide what the code stand for. So Let's let me give you an example. Let me close this and show you something. Click on you right click on here and you go to edit. You have an option to provide a description. So let's provide a description and see whether you can see it in the system, right? The description is like what a code represents, right? Taking care of multiple patients. So you can say this code represents participants expression of, and then you click on OK. And then when we go to analyze, you go to the same place and go to search. So you see here, you see the description in here, right? So the description is optional. If you think that you may not remember what this code represent, then you can put a description there just to remind you what the code means, right? But if you know it, you don't have to write a description. So that's how you may have to think about it and you kind of export it by saving it. Another thing that it may interest you is if you want to create a visual representation, select all of the things on the table and click on this one and it will show the percentage of code. We don't need a percentage, maybe we need a frequency the number of significant information connected to each of the codes. So you can see here that for this code, four significant information is connected. For this code, two significant information is connected. You can also do where cloud if you want to do that. So the bigger the font of the code, the higher the number of significant information connected to that, right? So you can also do that and you can export it or you can save it and use it for your presentation if it makes sense, right? So that that's just the overview. I know it might be overwhelming now, but I'm going to give you more information and detail. This is just to give you an overview of the function of 
UDA minor light. I hope this one was helpful. Thank you for your time.